we've shown you a zero cost method of tilting your IC705. We've also taken a look at the new AH705 ATU coming up soon. Now we look at a low cost budget headset for the IC705 and also how to create extra audio punch in that amazing rig. Well, hello once again and welcome back to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio video channel. I'm uh, glad you could join me. My call sign is G30JV. And I felt fairly old the other day when I realised that I was getting near the front of the call book until I, <laughs> until I saw recently a mention of Sweden's oldest ham radio operator, 101 years. So I've got quite a way to go yet to catch him up. Didn't catch his call sign, but I just put a picture up on the... Uh, on the screen here, 101 years old and still operating. That's 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 good. That is. Anyway, I hope you're keeping well. And I must say that I've been very heartened to see that our subscribers are approaching 10,000. And that's that's in the base. Well, that's basically what I just over a year. So we must be doing something right and uh, try to keep this channel fairly well, fairly sort of jolly and uh, unpolitical. And although I'm in the amateur radio business, I, I never forget how I started ham radio and how there were so many things I didn't know. And I, I must have asked some pretty stupid questions. I know I asked, asked some pretty stupid questions when I was young. I, some people will say, you still, answer, you still ask some pretty stupid questions, but there we are. <laughs> That's another story. Anyway, today I want to talk about a very simple product. It's a low cost product, but I think it's a product which will appeal to a lot of people, particularly if you go out portable, and particularly if you happen to be the lucky owner of an IC705. By the way, talking about equipment, we have got a few problems at the moment with supplies, and I suppose it's understandable the way the world is at the moment, but so the supplies are coming in in fits and starts, and whereas before there was a smooth flow of equipment, at the moment, one minute you've got it, the next minute you haven't got it. And the problem is when you haven't got it, you don't know when it's, you're going to get it next. So um, it's best to, to check our website. It will show whether it's in stock or not. But if you're at all unsure, you can always give our sales guys a ring. Anyway, back to the subject matter of today. A budget price headset for the ICOM IC705. Well, the headsets we're going to talk about today is the Heil HTH. The packet. The reason it's empty is because I've already got it out. This is the HTH. It's a boom headset, single earpiece. They also do a double earpiece. So I'll put it on to model it. Very lightweight. Boom is fully adjustable, up and down. And... Uh, the headband, um, it feels okay. It's lightweight and it does the job. Uh, so why would you need a headset? Well, I suppose if you're going to go out portable, the advantage of a headset is that you can hear the uh, receiver without having to have the volume turned up too loud. I suppose it could be a bit antisocial in some locations where you've got the uh, volume control turned up. It doesn't mean to say, of course, that um, it makes um, listening outside much easier, apart from the fact that you haven't got to have the volume up high. If there's any extraneous noises like traffic and so forth, then it enables you to hear the signals. Uh, one earpiece or two earpieces? Well, um, I'm using this one because that's the only one I've got. <laughs> Um, I can live with a single earpiece. I mean, I, I suppose the thing is, if you have two earpieces, you're a bit more closed in. A single earpiece uh, makes it fairly light and compact, and it, it does the job. Now, quite surprisingly, ICOM decided to use a two-pin connector on the IC705. 
rather like or identical to their handhelds. So you might think if you've got the IC705, it'll be a modular connection, but it's not. It's a two pin uh, connection, which is identical to their handhelds. Now the two pin connection on this headset is molded. So it's in other words, it's fixed spaced, but that fits in nicely onto the socket as you'd expect. Now if we take a look at the actual headset itself, we've got quite a, I always think it's quite important, this anti-pop filter, because it means to say that uh, it, the, the breath uh, coming out of your mouth doesn't sort of cause pops. The boom microphone goes round in a click fashion. And when I first saw it, I thought, wait a minute, um, if I wear it like this, on the left side, that's fine. I feel comfortable that that's the way I'd want to wear it on the on, on the left side like that. But supposing I had a, a hearing problem or for whatever reason I wanted to use it the other way around. Well, in actual fact, it's fully reversible. You can just rotate it like that, and you can wear it over the other ear. So that's a good point. Fully reversible. And one very important point, I think, is PTT, press to talk, which is always a problem with, with headsets and so forth. Fortunately, this has a PTT button. It's not, not locking, uh, it won't lock, but it's a PTT button and it's got a clip there which enables you to clip onto your clothing, whatever. Um, so that's quite a useful feature, the PTT button, because a lot of headsets don't have it. It does mean, of course, that you can't operate true hands-free, but I still think with the headset on, you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of room to, to move around. It's not like holding the microphone there all the time. Um, you can, if you're not, tra if you're not uh, transmitting at any particular time, you, can, you don't have to hold the microphone in one hand and tune with the other, you, your hands are, hands are free. So I think that there's a PTT um, is a good feature on the headset and the headset itself gives you a lot of freedom. So let's now talk about setting up your headset. Um, I think a lot of operators don't really take enough notice of the facilities that are on their transceivers. Now, I'm talking about the IC705, which I have to admit is very well endowed uh, with audio adjustments, surprisingly so. Uh, you can adjust the transmit audio response, you can adjust the receive audio response, you can even adjust the filters. So it's worth spending a bit of time discussing that. So let me, let me just take you through what you can do, because you will get gain if you set up the headset correctly, you set up the audio chain correctly, you'll get a bit of gain compared with somebody who doesn't bother about it. So it's worth looking at. So we're going to look at that now. I've set the IC705 up on 20 meters and we've got zero mic gain and zero compression. So I'm now going to advance the mic gain and you'll see the movement here on the meter system. So we'll just increase the mic gain now. Golf 3 Oscar Julia Victor testing, G3O JV testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hello test, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hello test, G3O JV, and really and truly, once I've got to around about 22, 25, 26, 27, there is uh, quite a lively movement, we've got, um, we've got output there, and um, it's all set up and pretty, pretty good really. So I'm going to set it at around about uh, 25 and that looks about right to me. Now I'm going to uh, increase the compression and if you watch the meter you'll see it suddenly becomes a lot livelier. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You can see the uh, compression's coming up now, the meter's uh, much more lively. And I find around about halfway point is enough. Now, there's an interesting thing about compression. I'm talking across the microphone at the moment. If I talk into the microphone, just hear, see what happens. You can hear that pumping. I mean, it's all, it's, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? And that's because 
I'm actually talking straight into the microphone. I'm not moving the microphone any further away from my mouth apart from the fact that I'm angling it away. So I'm now talking across the microphone and you'll hear that uh, it's a much cleaner signal. Talk into the microphone, all that horrible distortion and um, you hear that sometimes on the air. So take that microphone so that it's angled away from your mouth so that it's 90 degrees to uh, your mouth. So you're actually talking across it. Gives it a much cleaner signal. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going into the menu system. Oh, by the way, I should mention that uh, I'm recording this using the monitoring system. If you go into the menu, you'll see on the right hand side monitor and you switch that on and that's where I'm taking the recording from. So let's go into uh, main menu set and right at the top there we've got something which says tone control. We press that there and we've got choice of receiver and TX. Well I'm going to choose TX because that's what I'm interested in at the moment. And we go to SSB, press it again and we've got a choice of TX bass, TX treble and TX bandwidth. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's go to bass first of all. Now I'm going into bass, um, press that. And I'm now transmitting um, and you can hear, we've got it set at zero. If I take this control back there, we lose a bit of bass. Not that noticeable really, but if I pull it forward, you'll hear, I think, quite a lot of increase in bass. Um, and it really does nothing. It might do something for FM, but uh, on uh, sideband, um, it's doing nothing for it at all. So we come out of there and we're going to treble now and see what happens with treble. Okay, we're on zero at the moment. Take the treble back. Oh, you can hear that the uh, treble has uh, fallen off there. Um, around about zero or minus one is okay and if we increase it you'll hear that uh, it's a to me it's a bit scratchy um it increases the uh the actual uh, frequency range but i'm not quite sure that we want that i would say that uh, for sideband you want about uh, zero maybe plus one something like that so we'll come out of that and we'll now go back to uh transmitter bandwidth um and that's set at wide at the moment so let's try mid. Um, there we are. Now, you can probably hear that the mid has, has reduced the uh, frequency range somewhat. And if we go down to the next one, which is, uh, where are we? Um, narrow. And press that. Um, it's, as you'd expect, narrow. I think that um, it's really a personal choice. Um, I think mid is not bad. Um, TX, uh, well, they were, TX wide is probably um, quite acceptable, but do p bear in mind that you can actually um, change these values. You can, if you click on to there, you can change the bandwidth and it's down to 500 um, and to the 2900 um, hertz, 2.9 kilohertz, and likewise the base. So it's a personal, it's a personal setting, but it's worth. Um, uh, trying. The main difference really is the treble and bass. And as I say, if you turn that treble up, you get uh, quite a... <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit over the top, I think. Um, but it's there to be um, adjusted. Now let's see what the power meter shows. I'm going to transmit with no compression. So one, two, three, four, five. This is G3OJV testing. That's no compression. I'm going to turn the compression up halfway now. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. Golf, three, Oscar, Juliet, Victor. That's the compression halfway up. And now I'm going to take the compression off. And one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. There's probably around about 3 dB of um, speech power gain there, which does translate into a louder signal if you're listening to it. So it's uh, well worth um, looking at. Now, it's, it's a valid question to ask. If all this is so important, why doesn't the manufacturer have a switch on the front panel or in the menu which says DX and another switch which says rag chew? Well, the reason is that all voices are different. I mean, that's how we recognize people. 
you get a phone call and somebody speaks to you down, down the phone, and even though it's sort of a restricted response, you can actually recognise the voice. And the reason you can recognise the voice is because it's different to anybody else's voice. Now that's great for recognising voices, but it's not so good for audio because it does mean to say that the best audio response to give the maximum power <laughs> is going to be different from one person to another. Now you've probably all heard people with deep voices and people with high voices. And quite clearly they're quite dramatic differences and they have to be treated separately. Somebody with a high pitched voice would probably benefit from a bit of bass boost and a bit of treble cut. And vice versa, somebody with a big deep voice like that would benefit from a bit of bass cut and perhaps a little bit of treble boost. That's the reason why it has to be variable. And I'll give you another example. I've done quite a bit of recording in the past, um, and not in the front of the microphone, I have to say, because my, my voice is awful, I can't sing. But a lot of singers have their own personal microphones, and it's a fact that some microphones enhance the voice. And in fact, some artists will not to perform unless they've got their favourite microphone because they know that microphone favours their voice. It gives them a bit of lift. It gives it articulation, that sort of thing. So it is important that when you are processing audio, the, 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 the voice, um, spoken audio, or singing for that matter, you have the optimum. Now, we're not performers as amateurs, we're not performing to audiences, at least not many of us are anyway. <laughs> but if you want to get the best possible transmitted audio and the most effective audio, it's worth taking time to sit down and read the manual, plug your radio into a dummy load, turn the monitor button up and have a play around with it. It's quite educational and I guarantee that at the end of that session, you'll have learned a bit more about audio and particularly a bit more about the controls on your radio that will help the transmitted signal. And of course, as a, a byproduct of that is on the receive side as well. The receiver um, side has got its own separate uh, filters. Different, different um, subject, which I, I cover part of that anyway. So there we are. That's the um, audio side. I, I, mean, I started off talking about the Heil headset, didn't I? <laughs> I've digressed onto audio generally, but perhaps that's a good thing, I don't know. But the little uh, Heil headset is not expensive, very effective, and I think if you're going to go portable, it's well worth considering. Of course you can use it the base station as well, but uh, yeah, I was very impressed with it, I love it. It's, uh, it's not high tech, but it does the job, and that's, that's the sort of thing that we, we look at sometimes, isn't it? It's, it's not high tech but it does the job. It makes life easier and it might, makes the hobby more fun. So there we are. I hope, <laughs> hope you've enjoyed that or you've learned something from it. Um, I do appreciate you uh, watching these channels and don't forget to press the subscribe button um, to just indicate that you've enjoyed the, uh, the video and that you want us to keep doing more. In the meantime, uh, I know that we're, well, this is, this is been recorded at the end of January. In the meantime, of course, we can't go out at the moment and it looks as if it's going to be like that for a month or so. But there's some good news on the horizon with all these vaccines and so forth. So I think that come spring, perhaps us ham operators that want to get outside can get outside. In the meantime, take care, keep safe, enjoy your hobby, speak soon.